Try again. <laughs> I was about to step on course for my final run, and it was a big one. It was for the gold medal. My heart was racing, I was a little inside my head, and my nerves were starting to get the best of me. In my sport, it's extremely easy to make a mistake. It could be something as subtle as turning your head the wrong way or saying the wrong thing. And my partner is totally depending on me. At the Agility World Championships, the winners are separated by only hundreds of a second. And there is a lot of talent out there across all of the countries in the world. So as I stood there, gained composure, tried to get a grip, and ready to go out there, I took a look down at my dog, and there he was tugging away on the toy, barking, spinning. He was just so excited to go out and do what he loves most in the world, and that's to play agility. He could care less that we were at the World Championships in a foreign country. He, you know, was just like being in the backyard. So I thought that I should probably take a lesson from his book and relax a little bit and enjoy myself. And we went out and we had a great run. Dogs have been a huge influence in my life, and they have taught me a lot of things, which is funny because I'm a professional dog trainer, and my job is to teach them. Uh, but I'd like to share with you how working with dogs has allowed me to overcome some obstacles in my life um, and also led me to be a 20-time world agility champion. Um, you're probably wondering what agility is. Agility is a, a dog sport for uh, dogs, obviously, and my job as a handler is to navigate him through a course that he's never seen before as fast as we possibly can with the least amount of faults. And at the level that I play, it takes quite a bit of determination and skill. Now, I was pretty much born into this doggy life. My parents, Deb and Marty McCann, started a small dog training business back in 1982, around the same time I was born. And uh, after the last four decades, it's grown to be the largest dog training facility of its kind in the world. And what we do is kind of interesting. We train the owner to train the dog, which can be challenging at times. Um, you know, we are faced with a lot of different dogs and breeds, personalities, but we also get to work with a lot of different personalities of people as well. And I hate to say this out loud, but dogs are often a lot easier to train than the people are. <laughs> now, um, I've been interested in dogs um, since I was a little kid. I used to cart around with my parents to competitions, and I was competing uh, by the time I was 10 years old. As a teenager, I decided that I wanted to start competing in agility a little bit more seriously. And before I turned 20, I won my very first Canadian National Championship. And this earned me a spot on my very first world team. I earned a spot on Team Canada. Now, my first world team experience was pretty incredible. It completely opened my eyes to an entirely new world of the sport. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. Now, I didn't win anything that year, but being there definitely fueled my fire to want to be there again. So um, I went home and I worked hard for the next two years and uh, I tried out for the team again and was lucky enough to be picked uh, once again. So in 2006, my dog and I jumped on a plane and we flew to Netherlands and uh, we went to our second world championship. And at this particular one, the uh, winner was determined by the results of five different courses um, over the weekend. And um, I ended up having a pretty good weekend with my dog, Jitterbug. And um, I have some pretty crazy names, as you'll soon find out. And um, we uh, went clean in all of those five runs, which is fabulous, but we only placed about second or third. So as I walked to the closing ceremonies, I was obviously very proud of what I had accomplished, but I wasn't sure if I had done, you know, quite enough. And I listened closely as they announced the bronze medal and the silver medal. And then when I didn't hear my name, I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed, but I thought I'll just try again next year. And then all of a sudden, I heard screams and just craziness coming from the Canadians. And I listened closely, and I heard Jitterbug and Kale McCann, the 2006 World Agility Championships. Gosh, I'm emotional thinking about it right now. Yeah, thanks. It was a, a pretty incredible experience to stand up there with a medal around my neck, my dog at my side, and you know, listening to the national anthem. Um, it was a, a moment I'll never forget. I just want to point out how hilarious this picture is because my dog is actually snuggling with the third place person <laughs> as I am enjoying the moment by myself. <laughs> that was uh, definitely what she was like. 
Anyways, after that experience, I was completely addicted and I wanted to be there again. So um, when I went back to Canada, I started to think about how I could raise my game so that I could accomplish this. I knew that if I wanted to get better, I needed to surround myself with people who are better than me. It's a great way to push yourself, you know, makes you outside your comfort zone. Um, so that's what I did. I started to travel to different places to compete against a wider range of handlers. I would sit and watch hours of video online of all of the best handlers. And then, of course, I took some time to focus on my dogs, their um, skill, their speed, and also their fitness. At the same time as this competing, I started to be more involved in our dog training business, and because agility was such a passion of mine, I started to teach agility classes. I was starting to develop my own methods and um, training styles, and um, what I learned is that if you really want to understand your craft and to the greatest degree, you need to teach it to other people. Because when I started to teach it more, I really got a more thorough, thorough understanding of what I was doing. And on top of that, I was starting to realize that although training the dogs was tons of fun, working with the people was actually even more rewarding. Um, when you get to the point where you have somebody who's interested in something and you have the ability to affect the changing their expectations or raising their goals or really letting them think that they're capable of doing something a lot bigger than what they feel, it's a pretty amazing feeling. And I could feel myself going from just a regular instructor and turning into a full-fledged coach. Um, and I'm really proud to say that I've helped over 10 people make it to the World Championships now, and many of them have even won medals, which is pretty cool. Now, since 2004, I made a goal for myself that I wanted to be selected for Team Canada every single year, which is a pretty bold goal. Um, but I'm really proud to say that I actually have accomplished that goal. And that's 16 world championships, eight different countries with five different dogs, 40 medals altogether, and 20 world championship titles. That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. For sure, it was, it was, I'm very, very excited about it, of course, but I'm sure it sounds like I was swimming in success, but, you know, there was a few um, hard times for me throughout the years, a few challenges that I had to overcome. Some of those things actually made me question whether I wanted to keep doing this or not. Um, a hard part for me was a um, number of years ago, I had gotten a new puppy, of course, with the idea of training her to be a world champion, and uh, unfortunately, just before she was a year old, um, she died in a tragic accident, and if any of you have ever, oh boy, <laughs> if any of you have ever uh, lost a pet, I'm sure you can imagine just how difficult that was. Um, so I took a step back from competing a little bit and I focused on training. It was a pretty tough time. But a few months later, I uh, had a quick change of heart because of this little dog right here. Her name is Funky Monkey and uh, she absolutely turned things around for me. She was a wild woman, she loved life, and uh, it just totally kicked me back into what I love to do most. Um, so while we were getting ready to compete, everything was going great, and all of a sudden I s started to notice that she was losing speed and she was losing confidence, and I just couldn't figure out why. And as I took a step back, I started to realize that I was putting so much pressure on her to be my next world champion that it was actually causing her to not want to play at all. At the same time, I was being really closely watched by the dog community. I had had several great dogs already. I'd had a lot of big wins, and people were ready for me to come out with the next great dog and the next big win, or not. Um, so I really had to set that aside, and I had to focus on figuring her out. And so that's what I did. I did a little bit of outside-the-box training that I hadn't done before, um, and I figured her out, and through that, we developed a really great connection, and she actually went on to win more medals than any of my other dogs. And uh, she's 12 years old now, and she's retired, and uh, I owe a lot to her. Um, the best part about it, though, is I was able to learn from that experience, and now when other people come to me with issues similar to her with their dogs, I know exactly how to help them. Now, along with these challenges, I was also at a time in my life where I was trying to figure out my career path. Um, training dogs was the only thing that I had ever done, and I was starting to wonder whether I was capable of doing something else. You know, I think it's pretty normal to be a little bit apprehensive when you have a big decision to make in your life. Um, and I think sometimes, deep down, you know what the answer should be, but you might not be ready to make it yet. Um, and I had had a lot of advantages from my parents. They were very successful with their business, with competing, and I really wanted 
wanted to figure out how to make my own success. I didn't want to just have it handed to me by my parents. Um, so I took some time to put some focus on myself, focus into my craft. And as I gained more experience, I did start to realize that I had a few special qualities as a trainer um, and also as a coach that were going to set me apart from other people. And that really helped to boost my confidence. Now, in dog training, there is a lot of life le lessons to learn. One of those lessons are is that you can't reap the benefits of a reward if you don't put in the hard work. And um, that's actually something that we do or we focus on when we're teaching the dog to do something. So we take something that they want, like food, for example, and we teach them to work hard for it. But we do it through positive reinforcement. At the same time, though, we also teach the dog that it's OK to make mistakes. And if they make one, just to relax and try something different. So I actually want to try something with you guys right now. I want to see if I can uh, work with Slam here. And I want to play a little word association. So I want to see if in just a few moments here, I can teach Slam how to do a behavior that he already knows on a word that he's never heard before. OK, buddy, I need you now. Hi. Are you ready for this? It's your big moment. OK, you don't have to get on the bed. Apparently, we've had a lot of rewards for being on the bed. OK, come here. Sit. Good boy. So I need your help. So he obviously knows how to lie down on the word down already. So what I would like you guys to do is I want someone in the audience in a moment to shout out a word that has nothing to do with dog training, preferably like one or two syllables, something that he's probably never heard before. Christmas. Christmas. Pineapple. Both really good choices. OK, we're going to go with pineapple. I just got married in Hawaii, so it brings back good memories. Um, <laughs> OK, so we're going to go with pineapple. Um, so in order for me to do this, you need to know one really important thing about dog training, and that is dogs learn within one second. So I need to say pineapple, and then within one second, I'm going to use the reward to help them into the behavior that I'm trying to achieve. And I'm going to do it a few times. Hopefully, it's enough time in this small, small moment that we can figure this out. OK, you ready, buddy? Pineapple. Yes, good boy. OK, good. Here, sit. Good. Pineapple. Yes, good. OK, here, buddy. Sit, good boy. Pineapple, yes. OK, I'm going to try one more. OK. It's in my hand, I promise. Right here. Sit. Pineapple, yes. Good boy. OK. I wish I could do more repetitions. The pressure is really on here. So I am going to, in a moment, say pineapple, but I'm not going to show him the behavior. And I'm going to see if he can figure this out on his own. Now, if he does, does this, I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to reward all of the food in my hand. And I want you guys to be excited as well, because he's going to be pretty proud of himself. OK, Slammy, don't let me down, buddy. Ready? Pineapple. Yay! <laughs> Jackpot! <laughs> Woo! That was stressful. That was like, that was as stressful as going to the World Championships. My God. OK, we got to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Pineapple. Yay! Good boy. You are so smart. Good boy. You got it all? Good boy. Now, I find this concept extremely fascinating. You know, in just a few moments, I was able to teach Slam work hard, earn a reward. And I think people use the same concept, but on a much bigger scale. You know, we're all working towards something that we really want. But we can't achieve things like success or money or fame or whatever it is just by strolling along in life. You know, we need dedication, dare I say ambition, in order to accomplish those things. Good boy. I think it's also important to remember, too, that the path that you take isn't always the obvious one. You might have to go in a few different directions or try a few different things. For me, you know, I was training dogs, and I was also being a competitor. And those two things led me to something that I'm now really passionate about, and that's, you know, being a coach. Now, I feel very grateful that I get to train dogs for a full-time profession. It's pretty cool. And I'm obviously very proud of my accomplishments. But the best thing is that I now get to use my platform to help other people accomplish their goals as well. And I do owe a lot to my parents because they provided a, an environment for me as a child that allowed me to learn to communicate with dogs um, and also with people. And that's a skill that I have found to be completely invaluable in my life. I was never really forced to train dogs. It was something that sort of came naturally to me, but uh, I was always encouraged to think big and that I could do anything that I wanted to as long as I worked hard enough for it. 
The road to success is not always smooth, though. There could be a few obstacles in your way or hurdles to overcome. Um, a dog has to go over hurdles in agility, and you don't get very far. You don't get over, uh, an award if your dog goes around a hurdle or they go underneath it. They have to go over it, and they have to jump over another one and another one and another one until they get to the end of their course, and then, you know, it feels amazing, and they get their big reward. You know, Slam would literally jump over hurdles all day for something like this. I have jumped over hurdles of my own in my life, whether it's self-discovery or heartbreak or just pressure to succeed. And I did that also that I could reward, have the reward of being one of the top agility trainers in the world. But of course, I ended up with so much more than that. So the rewards are different for all of us. You know, you should really think about what are you passionate about? What goals do you want to achieve? And you should think big, keep your mind open to different possibilities, and just go out there and get it. What do you think, Slam? Should they go out and get it? Yeah, good boy. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>